and welcome to another edition of New Blue FX Tips and Techniques. I'm Ian Stark for New Blue. In this tutorial, we're going to carry on looking at some of the fantastic new features of Titler Pro version 2, specifically the goodies we can find under the Scene tab. If you haven't already had a good play around with simple Titler paragraphs and styles, you might want to look at some of the earlier tutorials first. In this tutorial, I'm not going to cover the basics of setting up and working with Titler projects, and I'll be using fairly plain examples so we can focus on the new features rather than gazing at sizzling hot creations like those you'll be producing in about 10 minutes from now. So let's dive straight in and see what's on the new Scene tab. Well, there are two main sections, Camera Settings and Light Settings. There's only one setting you can tinker with in Camera Settings, so let's get that one covered first. Basically, it allows you to set how wide your virtual lens is. Where would this be useful? Well, here's a silly example lifted from a famous controversial 1979 comedy. If you Google the original movie poster, you'll see that my example is lacking in, well, several areas, but one in particular, epicness. Yes, there is such a word. I like to think of the wide angle setting as being an epic value slider. So if I increase the slider right up into the 90s, you should see what I mean. OK, it's still as rough as a badger's behind, but hopefully you get the picture. So that's it for camera settings. Let's take a look now at light settings. And boy, is this ever a great addition to the tool set. There are three types of light, point, directional and spotlight. You can adjust their parameters to suit pretty much any look and feel you're after. And best of all, all the parameters can be keyframed. There's a selection of intriguingly named presets, and New Blue is offering a $1 billion cash prize to the first person who correctly guesses the rationale behind the naming of the Bauer preset. Prize may not exist. You'll notice under the preset selection there's a slider called Ambient Light. As you've probably guessed, this affects the overall lighting strength in the scene. It affects all layers and paragraphs uniformly, regardless of their texture, colour, position, shininess or rotation. It's a useful way of stopping up the whole scene a bit if the effects of the individual lights are leaving overly dark areas in your project. So let's turn now to the individual light types at our disposal. By default, all new projects are set up with three lights, each configured as one of the different types available. You can turn any of the three lights on or off and change its type as you require by selecting from the drop-down list. So if you want three spotlights, or just one spotlight and a point light, that's easily done. Let's look more closely now at the different light types available. A point light is a little bit like a light bulb, and in case you need reminding of that, there's a handy dandy light bulb icon right there. Like a light bulb, there's a single point of emission which you can move closer or further away by either rolling your mouse wheel, dragging the position indicator, or changing its positional values. The triangle gives you a rough idea of where the point light is positioned. Notice how the position indicator line gets shorter as the Z value gets closer to zero, i.e. when it's at its closest to the object being lit. As soon as you dip into negative values, the point light is behind the object and therefore doesn't have any effect on its face. You'll also notice that the directional pointer turns grey. Obviously, the longer the line, the further away the light is. Just as you can't focus a light bulb, you can't focus a point light, so its light emits in every direction. With all these light types, you can change the colour and the brightness of the light source to suit your needs. A directional light is a little bit like the sun. Coming from England, I like to use this type of light most often to remind me what the real one looks like. And again, here's a handy icon for your pleasure. Like the sun, the light source is a long way away, in this case infinitely far away, and you can't change its distance from the object. That's why there's no little triangle at the end of the line. You can, however, change its direction by click-dragging the line or by using the position sliders for fine-tuning. Like point lights, directional lights also can't be focused. And finally, the spotlight. Spotlights are like a stage spot or flashlight. Spotlights are more versatile than point or directional lights in that you can change the distance and the direction as well as the width of the beam. As with other lights, you change values using the sliders or by manipulating the light's distance and direction pointer, or, and this is only for spotlights, its source position and beam width by click-dragging the crosshair to move it, 
or the edge of the globe to resize its beam. Finally you can adjust the feathering to focus the beam very tightly and sharply or for a nice soft edge. With all of the light types you can keyframe all of these parameters to animate your lights and create some stunning special effects. Let's take a look at one of the presets that shows this off brilliantly, passing street lights. And here's another one, search lights. If you haven't explored animation in Titler Pro, take a look at the tutorial which covers it in more detail. So that just about covers all the exciting new features that can be found on the Scene tab. As always, I encourage you to have a good old rummage around and see what you can come up with. For now, this is Ian Stark saying thanks for watching and for learning a little bit more about New Blue FX Titler Pro version 2.